comparisons within you and without you, and some more John Lennon doing. What was that thing called? Uh, Turn it off, you know, uh, uh, Tomorrow night was. And uh, before that, you heard a little bit of George Harrison. Here comes the sun with George Harrison's. Uh, if I need someone, and a little bit of. Uh, oh, it was in the Norwegian wood. So that was, that was okay. That was more than okay. That was righteous. You know, I was fortunate enough to um, grow up in a great time and uh, had a lot of heroes. Uh, paramount for me as far as a musical entity would have to be the Beatles. I learned most of my path was from their sensibilities. And, uh, but probably the most influential guitarist to me growing up was when I heard that the first Yardbirds album that I had, which had Jeff Beck on it. Yeah. And when I heard Jeff Beck, it just had, I followed him through his whole career and it was uh, fortunate enough to get to play with him and, and I was fortunate enough to open up for him and support him and uh, I'll tell you a funny story about Jeff because he's, he was kind of a complicated guy. He could be really charming and funny and, and he could be, have that look like, get the fuck out of my way. <laughs> anyway, I, um, I had never met him before and I got a call from my booking agent at the time in Boston. Um, when I first started doing my instrumental trio, he said, uh, listen, is there anybody that uh, you would not want to support, open up for, because, you know, we're starting to get requests for supporting my first record was starting to do pretty good. And I said, yeah, I never want to open for Jeff Beck. Never want to open for Jeff Beck. Yeah. So about six months later, I get a call from the agent that says, hey, listen, Don Law, who's a big promoter in the Boston area, said, uh, Jeff Beck's been playing the State Theater up in uh, Portland, Maine, uh, and he wants you to support him. I said, okay. <laughs> and I'm on the phone and saying, I can't believe what I just got myself into. And to make matters worse, he was traveling at the time, I think it was uh, with Jennifer Batten, and it was a big, big production. He used 42 channels in the console. And he said, listen, you can only use four channels, and you can only have two monitor mixes. It's a three-piece band. So I said, I don't know how the hell we're going to do this because I play in stereo, so I have two, two you know, lines to go to the PA, and I need two monitors here myself because I don't use any speakers behind me. So the drummer said, don't worry about it, we'll just do, I'll bring a big bass drum and I'll have one cymbal and a, a hi-hat, and we'll just put one microphone in front of the drum kit, and the bass player would have his line, and we'll just set up real tight together and we'll get you on monitors. I said, okay, what, what, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> like everything. So, uh, the night before we were due to do that show in Portland, Maine, he was playing the Orpheum in Boston. And a very good friend of mine, uh, a very famous program director, DJ in Boston, his name is Carter Allen, uh, was on a station called WBCN in Boston, which was one, I think, maybe the first FM station in the country. And uh, he said, hey, I got a couple extra tickets to see Jeff. Do you want to you go tonight? So I said, yeah, I'd love to see him. Big mistake. <laughs> he was so phenomenal. I, had, I mean, I've seen Jeff Beck probably at least a dozen to 15 times since going back from 1974. And, excuse me. Um, I just lost my train of thought. Um, so 74. So the show, and he is just on fire. He's like, I've never seen a, a display of, of a guitarist so connected to an instrument in my life. So when the show ends, and um, Carter says to me, hey, we'll go downstairs, let's say hi. Uh, I said, okay, let's go. So if anybody's been to the Orphan in Boston, it's, a, it's an old theater, and you have to go down into the bowels of the dungeon, which is where the meet and greet area is, and it smells, and it's, it's horrible. And there were just a million people there waiting to see Jeff. And I was hanging around for like 45 minutes and I was getting aggravated and hot. And, and, and uh, 
uh, I said, Carl, I'm just going to go. I, you know, let's just go. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow night because I'm supporting them tomorrow night. So he says, Yeah, okay, okay, okay. So we start walking up these spiral staircases in the in the uh, these metal stairs in the, in the orphanage. And I'm talking to Carter. I'm walking up and holding the railing, and I'm looking behind me where Carter was walking up behind me. And I get to the landing, and I turn around and I smash right into Jeff Beck. First time we ever met him, I hit his head. And he says, I know you. I have your record. My friend Kim sent me your album. He says, Yeah, I like it. I said, and then I said to him, Well, they asked me to open up for you tomorrow night up in Portland, Maine. And he just stopped for a minute. And he puts his arm on my shoulder and goes, well, you going to do it? Because <laughs> <laughs> you probably knew how frightened I was. Uh, I was but we did the show, and, and he was great. He was very gracious, and the audience was gracious, and I got to meet him a bunch of other times. And I want to do a song because for me, he was the uh, easy go as far as rock guitar players go. 